Okay. So good morning, good afternoon, good evenings to everyone. Welcome to the KEP talk, ecological talk series. And today the topic is what is an eco village. So before the talk, um, let me introduce what is KEP, Curtis Reef Earth Programs. Curtis Reef Earth Program is a KFBG initiative that in integrates our three municipal work, which is nature conservations, sustainable living, and holistic educations. We aim to provide inspirations and to help ourselves to connect to ourselves and natures, and also to experience a uh, paradigm shift to build up our re resilience to the global challenge. So this is why today we come to the topic of eco village, which is considered to be one of the practical solutions to the um, global challenge. So we are it's our honors to have Om and Shen Heng as our speakers. So they are both very devoted to the eco village movement. That they are the core members, and Om is the co-founders of her eco village in North Thailand. And Shen Heng is one of the core members in the Namchong eco eco communities in Hong Kong. So today we also have three, more than 350 people sign up to this talk from Hong Kong, mainland China, Canada, Europe, Taiwan, all over the world. So it's our great pleasure to gather together and explore the topic. Um, today is also our first special um, uh, series that we have two speakers. So both of them will share the Eco Village and their experience and then they will have a dialogue with them um, themselves. And then if you have any questions along the talk, you can also type in the chat box at the end of the half around 20 minutes, then we will have the uh, um, exchange with the speakers. I will help him to um, speed out your questions. Um, before the talk starts, there's some logistics that you might want to uh, know to help you uh, to have a smooth experience. So we encourage you to turn on your camera to have uh, connections with us and um, speakers. And also the talk will be recorded to share on YouTube and also to those who sign up but because of the time difference or other reasons that they couldn't attend the live. And we provide two translations. One is Cantonese and one is Putonghua. So you can find the channels of interpreters at the bottoms of the Zoom settings. So if you encounter any technical problems, you can contact to our KFBG teams. Um, you can see like uh, Jamie, for example, you can um, chat box her and she will help you. So I hope you enjoy today's um, talk. So may I first invite Om to start. Thank you very much. Uh, Om, you may want to unmute. <laughs> I already start with not talking. <laughs> <laughs> I said uh, thank you, Simon and KFBG for this invitation to share my story with you and also the opportunity to exchange story with uh, Shun Heng. And uh, hello everyone in this room and everyone who listening to this record after. I like to keep a bit of um, introduction about myself a, uh, a little bit more. So then it give you a bit of context about the story and the contents I'm, I'm going to share with you today. So um, I I am a, a co-founder of Kaya Ashram Eco Village, which is based in the northeast of Thailand. Actually it's based in my hometown, home village. So I grew up in a, a small village in northeast of Thailand. And my hometown at that point was a very small, remote village. So my whole life, my whole world as a as a child was just within my village. There were no electricity, no television, no nothing. So my life was just around the village. So I had that experience in the uh, traditional village life. And then I went to join the university at the age of 18, where I study about community development, 
which is because I was very curious at my teenage year where a lot of change started to happen in my village. And then after that study, I joined a, a intentional eco-village, intentional community called Wongsit Asham near Bangkok and lived there for eight years. And that is where I learned about eco-village and eco-village design and uh, about sustainable living, conscious design of sustainable living. And then after that, then decided to come back home to introduce this kind of principles about eco-village that I learned to create an intentional community in my hometown, as well as the, using that principle that I learned to reconnect that with my own root in the traditional um, culture and in traditional village that I have my background in, just because the the talk today we will touch upon both kind of context, the intentional uh, community and also local communities. So today as the introduction to into this topic of what is eco-village, I want to share with you a small video of two minute video that made by the Global Eco-Village Network, Oceania Asia, where they collect um, information and then voice from different eco-village in the regions about what is an eco-village from their perspective. So we will start with this video and after that we will have a little bit of um, uh, looking deeper into it, what, uh, what, what it can mean that could help us to have a better understanding. So can we put up the, the two minute video to start with? A space with the freedom to live authentically and in harmony with nature making the world a better place for everyone to be. For me, Eco Village is a gateway that everyone can live as authentic self with open and healthy and joyful heart. To me, Eco Villages are places to experiment with and, and share ways to live a one planet life and places for people to thrive, to restore habitats, ecosystems, food systems and live into being a new, more positive story. Eco Village, or Urban Eco Neighbourhood in our case, is about living our lives in uh, acknowledgement that we're just one part of a, a healthy ecosystem and, um, and being as good neighbours as we can be to each other and to all of the other organisms. An earth-centred community that focuses on creativity and regeneration and working with others and with the planet towards a regenerative future. An eco-village in essence is an inner heart space, an inner culture of regeneration, of sharing and caring as one family of humanity. Where the soul of the land and nature and the soul of the community are in yoga, harmonizing, balancing, honoring all dimensions of life. My experience of an eco village is a community that's coming together using a governing, an agreed governing process, and as we've just been using sociocracy, to look at the way that the village is functioning, how we communicate with each other how our resources are being utilised and for us uh, that is the development and expansion of the Eco Village and also the, um, the ways that we can improve and so at the moment we're looking at the e Eco Village Impact Assessment Survey and very excited about that because it gives us an indication of how we're tracking against the Sustainable Development Goals um, which means that you know then there's more areas that we can look that we can improve on because for us regeneration is hugely important. An eco-village is a community of people who believes in sharing the world with all living beings, engages in sustainable economic activities, willingly serves one's community with utmost care and honesty and lives in harmony with the nature. We need stories. Okay, so thank you for putting up the videos. So as you can see in these videos that those people who come from different eco-villages, they may give uh, 
uh, the definition of what is eco village to them from a different perspective, from a different angle. But it is not at all contradicting with each other. It's just so many layers in the eco village lifestyle. It involves so many dimensions. So it is very hard to put it into a few sentences of what is eco village. But each person that lives in eco village, they might pick up some aspect of it that is really they feel that it is really means it is very important for them that is really uh, something that they are looking for something that they come for in an eco village which for some people it might be very different some people emphasize more on the aspect of personal development personal growth while some people are coming to the eco village for more of like um, uh, human connections connection with other people while people while other people coming to eco village for finding a space where they can contribute to the regeneration of the earth in the ecological aspect so that is like as you can see that at the end of the video they ask like what does eco village mean to you so if if you go to an eco village and then you ask people who live there in eco village what is eco village mean to you even they are living in the same community they might give you a they might give you, they may tell you in a different aspect of it. So it's really like, because it's in, it includes so many uh, multi dimensions of life in that, in, in that sense. So now I want to share with you on the, um, the, uh, the definition by the Global Eco Village Network, which is uh, uh, giving us the, um, the guideline of looking at eco village in the four dimensions. There are, as from the video, there are many dimensions that they mentioned, but this presentation, I want to walk you through different dimension, different aspects. So then we can start to see it a bit more um, holistically with this guideline. So that is the video that we already watched. And uh, so we can go to the next page. In the video, there was uh, one definition by Lunduk Dupa, which is the, um, representative from the network, uh, uh, eco-village network uh, in Bhutan. I put his definitions here because I think it's quite uh, inclusive in all the different aspects and he put it quite uh, beautifully. And that is eco-village is a community of people who believe in sharing the world with all living beings, engage in sustainable economic Activities guided by the principles of right livelihood, willingly serving one's, one's communities with utmost sincerity, care, and honesty, and live in harmony with nature. So when we look into, into this uh, definition, you can see that it involves different aspects of life, eco village lifestyle. The first aligned a community of um, maybe the can we go back to the first uh, slide? Um, yes, this one. A community of people who believe in uh, sharing the world with all living beings. That is about belief. That is about how we understand our, how we interpret our relationship with nature. What is our values that we use as a foundation of our relationship with the natural world. So that is in a deeper level, in the worldview level. And then sustainable economic uh, activities guided by the principle of right livelihood. That is about our economic life. How is that um, uh, aligned with our values and our worldview? And then the next slide is on the social dimension, which is about how we live together. And the last one, in harmony with nature, what does that mean in practice, in in day to day living? So now we let's see the um, four dimensions that is uh, presented by the Global Eco Village Network, which is the include the social dimension about uh, our connections, our how do we live together, the cultural dimension, economic dimension, and ecology dimension. So let's see the each dimension in the next slide. And the worldview and the cultural dimensions, Eco Village aim to build our uh, or regenerate diverse cultures that support people to empower and care for each other, their community and the planet. So basically, is we 
in the social dimension is about asking ourselves, how can we create a community space where people who live in the community feel that this is, this is their home, a place that they can rely on, a place that they can find support when they need, a place that they can talk to other people with uh, honesty, compassion, and with trust, a place that they feel like they can learn and grow and they can be themselves and then they can evolve in their own unique way. How can we create such a space for people to be? And uh, to answering this question is involve other, uh, other principles in creating a community such as like how do we uh, make decisions together? Because if people don't feel like they have a voice to, to make decision or um, on what's happening in their life or in the community that might not give them that sense of like, this is their place, this is my home, this is where I belong. So the decision-making is also an important aspect of how uh, an eco-village would uh, decide that. So then it embrace and empower each individual to create that uh, sense of trust and safety, as well as how we communicate with each other in an honest and compassionate way especially when there is conflict and when there is disagreement, how do we embrace the conflict in a way that is um, empowering, learning, and that our community can continue to evolve for the better. So this is all need a design thinking of how we're going to create or engineer these social structures within a community to be able to create a space where one can feel that this is this is my place, this is where I belong, this is my people that I trust and then that I have a place. This community needs me and I need this community. How can we create that kind of space? So that is the social dimension. And then the uh, next is, the, um, oh, sorry, I just talked about the social dimension. So I just talked about the social dimension before, but the slide was the the the, um, the cultural and the verbal. That that's my mistake. So can we go back to the the previous slide again? <laughs> okay, now I'm going to talk about the verbal and the culture. My speech before just about the social, and the verbal and the culture is about how do we create a culture or a way of life that is the um, hold us together in spirit in the values that um, we believe in, that we share together. How can we create a, a culture that uh, keep us continue to be reminded that we are, we belong, we, we are part of nature and that how can we create a culture that continue to hold us and guide us in that value, in that part, in that spirit? What kind of traditions, practice or storytelling, art, music, uh, any practice in the community that when we can create and then that we can uh, we can uh, use that as a way to to hold us and to live our value. Many eco village they create their own culture, a new new practice, new tradition and many also learn from old culture or old traditions from the traditional, communities for local from local culture or from the um, indigenous cultures so it can be quite mixed on how uh, an eco village how culture in eco village created but the purpose of it is to is to hold people together on the the values that they they agree on and then they they hold, they believe all right so that that is the quickly about the cultural aspects so now let's move to the economic I think the the next slide. The economic aspect is about um, how do we uh, build an economic practice, uh, economic system that is fair, fair to the nature, fair share within the people in the communities, and fair for the future generation. Is it possible that we can find an economic practice is that we could meet our needs, the need that we have to, to live, while also not um, exploiting nature 
even better than that is how can we do it also regeneratively? Can the economic and the ecology go together, come together? And uh, how can we also connect and empower local economy in the process as well? So that is also a lot of uh, design thinking need to put into that because we want to create a different story where our economic life, life um, could also um, could coexist with the, the growth of the ecology, which is the, sto the story that we see in general is that we, we, we take the resource from uh, nature for our own economic goal, but how in eco-village, we still need to think about what is our economic goal, what do we really need? And then how can we achieve our goal without sacrificing the wealth of nature? So that is the principle of the ecology. And then the last one uh, is the economy. Uh, and the ecology is the eco-village aim to access food, shelter, water, and energy in ways that respect the cycle of nature. Aim to integrate human with the rest of nature in ways that increase biodiversity and regenerate ecosystem. Give people a chance to experience their interdependence with system and cycle of life on a direct and daily basis. How all that we need come from nature, what we need for our food, for our shelter, our medicine, our clothes, everything that need we need coming from nature. So how can we take what we need in the way that is doesn't uh, create pollution and better than that is that it also regenerative. How can we manage our life that the input we take and the output coming out of our life, our system is not creating um, negative impact to nature, not create pollutions or destructions. Is it possible that we will still achieve our need while also make it regenerative? How do we grow our food while also rebuilding soil? How do we use water while also replenish its source? How can we manage our waste that waste become a, a useful resource? How can we share this um, how can we regrow nature so then the future generations also could survive because they we do not exploiting what we have in the with the ecosystem. So that is the general four dimensions of the eco village lifestyle that is mostly consciously designed, which is eco village around the world. They might have some. Uh, differences in their methodologies of how they achieve all these goals or this, um, but they share some principles as mentioned in the in all these four dimensions. But they might be different in details in the because of their local context and also because of of their main focus, because each eco village may have different focus or mission or purpose in the, that the, the people design together. So yeah, that is the, um, the brief introduction about the eco-village. What is an eco-village? If we look at eco-village, we might look, we, we, we see that there is the aspect of the, there is the, these four aspects being embraced uh, consciously uh, designed to achieve this uh, goal and using this, uh, different strategies, different methodologies that people may learn, may create or learning from the traditional cultures. And uh, today we have a chance to learn from two different eco-village, <laughs> right? And um, one is, uh, uh, is eco-village in making in Hong Kong from Nam, uh, Nam Chum. Eco Village, which uh, let me invite uh, Chun Hing to share with us how is this going with the devil Eco Village development there. And after that, I will share about the Gaya Ashram the Eco Village development. Okay, hello, hello everybody. 
uh, yeah, I'm so happy to be here to share the experiences in Hong Kong, at, uh, particularly in Nam Chong, uh, because uh, we're very actually um, eco villages are uh, not so popular or not many cases, uh, not not many experiences. So we are also uh, just uh, experiencing it. So the title I um, uh, let me share. Okay. 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 Oh. Okay. So, um, well, um, not like, uh, um, uh, I just introduced a bit about myself. Also the background, I am a member, uh, of the Nam Chung Eco community and I'm living there, but I'm not from there. Yeah. So, um, I moved, uh, in Nam Chung, uh, like four to five years ago. Yeah, so I so our story is quite different from Om. So let's uh, let me introduce you just the basic facts and the history of our community first, and then um, we'll talk more about the uh, con the the cultural context and what what are the challenges later. Yeah, yeah, during our dialogue. Okay, yeah. So this is Nam Chong, <laughs> uh, an aerial a photo that is taken from uh, one mountain uh, at the eastern at the east. Yes. So just have a look. It is surrounded by mountains. Yeah. Um, and so the basic facts. Um, Nam Chong is a Border district is situated in the northeastern side of Hong Kong, facing Shenzhen, mainland China. Just to uh, let people who don't know Hong Kong, who don't know Nam Chong, yeah, uh, that well. So it's situated at the northeastern part of Hong Kong. Yeah, and um, the our community actually is an integral part of the Nam Chong district, uh, which is composed of five Hakka villages. Hakka village is um. Uh, one of the main, I think, ethnic, uh, not really ethnic, but uh, people who live in Hong Kong, uh, the, if the ancestors migrated to Hong Kong like 300 to four year, 400 years ago. Yeah. And so Nam Chung is an also uh, composed of uh, Hakka villages with five surnames. Yeah. And there's the ancestors also came 300 years ago. Yeah, and now our member size is around 60. Yeah, with around one third only living in Nam Chong and the nearby villages under different ceilings. So I'll tell you uh, why, what does that mean by it under different ceilings? Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, and then let me show you. Okay, so uh, here I mean the the five villages here, one here, one here. This is the Cheng village where I rent a place here. Yeah, I live here. And then the third one here, the fourth one here, and then the, the fifth one here. So with the river, so these two are located on the eastern side of the river and then three villages on the western side of the river. Yeah. And then, so these are the Hakka villages and uh, with the ancestors came 300 years ago. Yeah, and then our group uh, now is called the Partnership for um, uh, under the organization Partnership for Nature Education and Conservation, but uh, with, which is um, uh, nurturing the Nam Chong Eco community. So we are actually here. So this is a road going inside and then we all walk inside. Yeah, here, this is the um, our farmland. And then we walk here and then 
So our actually main main buildings are sort of like here, not really buildings, but structures. I'll show you later the the closer look. And um, so so the villagers uh, now living here, uh, mainly elderly people, uh, and the population is also um, small. I think all together, five villages uh, now is also like less than 100 people. Uh, because most of them migrated to Europe, England, mostly England, um, uh, like uh, in the 60s and 70s. So this is a closer look from an aerial photo. Yeah, so we have fishing ponds around. And then this is this is the uh, structures that this is the center of our the activity centers. Yeah, and... Um, so we have, okay, so we have uh, the, the physical setup of our community with we, we, the members live in different, in the villages nearby, they will rent uh, uh, houses from the villages. Yeah, because in Hong Kong, uh, in farmland, you cannot really uh, build houses, yeah, there. So we can only uh, do farming and have some activities that are related to farming um, and some temporary structures constructed, can be only be constructed in the farmland. So here we have the uh, big, uh, we call the big activity room. And then this is the, uh, no, platform, it's not a room. <laughs> no walls, yeah, because it's a temporary structure. Yeah, and then we have another so-called small uh, activity platform that we hold activities. And then this is uh, some of our farmland. Yeah, and then we have a, a community kitchen. Yeah, a natural building community kitchen. And then this is a toilet. So basically these are the basic, uh, some basic facilities that we have here. And now let me talk a bit about our history. Yeah. Um, so we, I think, I think similar to Gaia Ashram, we have, mm. we, I think we established in the same year, yeah, mm. uh, 2013, and up to now it's like 11 years, and then we are, we say we are in the process of making an eco-village, and so actually it's a, it's a process, yeah, and then, and I try to divide the three, uh, the process into three periods. Um, the first one is on uh, 2013, 2015. I called it a seed sowing period. <laughs> I used the metaphor of uh, of uh, planting. Huh? So um, it's more on uh, establishing ideas, perceptions, and orientations. Yeah, and then a trial of different action formats and also uh, construction of uh, fiscal spaces, yeah, uh, for our activities. So I'll show you, yeah. Um, so this is the, uh, the uh, in the second year that we already uh, started to do some, because we started off as a organization uh, called Partnership for Eco Agriculture and the Conservation of Land. So I think the context, I'll leave it later to explain the context, how this we came to the community. Uh, and uh, so we started uh, in the first years. And then we, when we started to do, we came here actually in the beginning, uh, that intention more is to so-called nurturing the land, yeah, and do more conservation and then do agriculture. But uh, we also think of uh, community, uh, eco community building. Uh, uh, so in the this is the uh, the the first sessions that we discuss what we want to do in order to if you want to build a community. So it's more mm -hmm. like on the livelihood, on agriculture, and also on the natural building thing. So I won't go into the details, just left you have a, an idea of the history. And also in the early stage, we, we I think we focus more on the um, uh, eco, 
agriculture, and then we try to mix of the local resources uh, to do uh, organic farming and then and land nurturing. Uh, so these are some of our produce, yeah, in the from the farm, and so. In the second year, we also need to because uh, there are actually no no infrastructure there in the beginning. So we have to construct this uh, by ourselves. So this piece of we built our first activity uh, platform in uh, two hundred one three and two hundred one four. So you can see our first constructions. Uh, so this is me learning how to do <laughs> uh, concrete. <laughs> plan uh, floors. And then uh, the next three years, I call it the sprouting uh, period. So we um, activate more pioneer projects, such as the oral history project, and uh, natural building co-learning, co uh, experiential educational programs. And then um, we also started the agricultural internship program. And also we focus also on team building. I'll show you some of the um, uh, activity photos so um uh, well so the next three years we started to integrate and then we tried to learn more we need to learn more about the community and the Hakka people and the history there so uh in 2017 we started to um uh interviews the uh villages this is the uh, one oldest uh, villages, village, villager uh, living in the uh, Cheng village, yeah, and then we also have some voice, uh, side visits, and then some report back. So and um, so this is what we did back there, and at that period of time, sprouting, yeah. So things coming up, yeah, from the earth. Huh? Uh, so we also started to do some natural building initiatives. And then this is the first oven, earth oven, and then also the earth uh, kitchen, the um, which were built in these two years at that period of time. And also we experienced uh, 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 different kinds of educational programs. Yeah, it's so like this is like a food mandala. Yeah, and also some experiential um, uh, from farm to table uh, activities and then some uh, cultural activities also. Yeah. Oh, this is the internship program. This is very significant uh, for us to attract young people to come into the community because we started off with only a f like uh, 10 to 50 people and uh, mostly uh like my age or younger <laughs> yeah and uh, not many uh, young people yeah and so uh later um we have we started this internship program yeah to attract more uh, concerned and young people who want to live a different um way of life the uh, to come to join uh the community and also uh, stay here for like three months, six months, a year. Yeah. So this is um the time when we all uh, the the number of the uh members increased, particularly young members. Yeah. And then be uh because when we are more sort of like uh with more people and then uh and more activities, so we need to have a team, so called the core members. So. We also realized uh, nurturing the land are more, more is, we need people. So we need also to nurture people. So uh, at that period of time, we also emphasize more on team building. Oh, so then the third period, like from 2019 to today, uh, I they called it a growing period. So, um, so in these few years, we have been trying to strengthen the sense of community. Yeah, as more, uh, more and more people moving into Namchong. Yeah, uh, um, as I as I said before, uh, in the beginning, actually not many members can moved in to the community because uh, we don't we cannot um, uh, uh, really build our own uh, structures. 
Yeah, so later there are more members because we get closer to the villages, so we can rent houses from the villages. So um, we 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 try to as more members uh, moving in, then we get closer uh, with the villages. Yeah, um, so uh, I'll show you. Yeah, getting closer. Um, so you see there are uh, people who there are also community, we have a community lunch. Yeah, and we also have some uh, sharing of uh, cultural nights or sharings within. This is the house I lived, uh, this is my house. We, yeah, uh, so we have more spaces and people can come closer together, the members. And then also uh, because of the oral history project, I. I said, uh, and then the oral history project has um, finished, and then we published the book, uh, like this one, yeah. So we call Nam Chong uh, storytelling or telling the stories of Nam Chong, yeah. And then uh, this is a uh, a significant uh, actually step uh, to deepen um, our relationship with the villagers. So this. Photo is uh, we could celebrate the publishing of the books and then we uh, give the villagers uh, the as gifts. Yeah. So this is a very um, um, historic moment <laughs> when we when the villagers actually embrace. I mean, we're very happy that uh, we we finished the oral history project and uh, and uh, and share with us the joy. And also we have some sharings with other community groups in Hong Kong. And then in this last period, then we are more focused uh, because we, after the um, uh, different trials and different kinds of um, uh, discussions, explorations, and uh, now we uh, we have more focus. So we try to focus more on equal community uh, education. So we have to uh, use our experience to let people know uh, how it can sort of like uh, living the, the experiences of living in a community or how it can really be look like in Hong Kong. Yeah, because uh, Hong Kong is so much, so many constraints, yeah. So this is the first course that we um, use uh, Eco Village uh, program course. Yeah, so these are the experiential activities. And then also, uh, we also, uh, focus more now on the uh, climate change thing. Uh, so these are the programs that like uh, named under the earth is burning. Uh, so let's uh, focus more on climate change. Uh, it's a co-learning workshop series uh, held in the last, these two years. Yeah. And also um, this, in this period of time that we also need to, because there are more, we have more people coming in and then moving in and then uh, engage in the activities. Uh, so we also need to align more with our vision and mission. Yeah. And so because there are actually there were a lot of discussion um, about what actually we want to do yeah, in, the, in the last period. So we think alignment is important. So actually just uh, to, to uh, a month or so uh, ago, we visited uh, the Konohana family in Japan. So it's a purpose to co-learn and to align our vision and mission. This is what we try to do uh, now. Um, so lastly, we. Um, so what what is our vision and mission now? I I put in the making because. Uh, we are still formulating it among the core members and also the concerned members. So this is these three points is my own articulation. Yeah, from my own perspective. Yeah. So for the first, I, 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 the first is on the global level, and so I think it's very um, in line with uh, what Om uh, has said uh, just now, uh, introducing the eco village. Yeah, to care for the earth and to build a sustainable living. Yeah, so that means that we, first of all, we less to do less harm to the earth and to restore balance by changing our lifestyle and learning from nature, and also to maintain a sustainable 
life together by building a good community relationships and feasible community economy. So it touches on different aspects of uh, the eco-village also. So on the Hong Kong local context, uh, we want to demonstrate uh, the possibility of living an alternative life and to provide practicing spaces or experiential learning opportunities in Hong Kong. So this is more uh, uh, a perspective uh, for the uh, a local perspective. Uh, the third is about an uh, individual as, as a person, as a member. Yeah, we also uh, believe that um, uh, to change our inner self as an important path to change the environment or the outside world. So, so it's also echo the uh, the principles of uh, deep ecology. Yeah. And now the organization structure. So we have the uh, this PNEC uh, is a nonprofit organization registered um, to conduct educational programs and to support the growth of Namchong Eco Community. And also the community is a practicing ground, practicing ground or platform for aspired members to create a life here and to work together to achieve our vision and mission. So this is like um, a, a community and then with an organization who represent it and also nurture the growth of the community. Uh, so these are the five scopes of work. So it's more on uh, natural building, uh, agriculture, food, uh, uh, history and nature, and also on uh, spirituality and art. Okay, thank you. Um, no, thank you, Junhing, uh, for the sharing uh, of this. Yeah. It's, I can see that there are something similar to Gaya Asham and something quite different. One oh, different yeah. thing is that I uh, see that you start from a group of people. You have yeah. a group of people that you come together and discuss together and we want to create something together. Yes, and then I see that you also spend times in the team building and yes. making a strong team on that. That is yeah. something different with Gaya Ajram. <laughs> Gaya Ajram is starting from just myself and my husband. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. We came from the very strong like uh, motivation of regeneration, regenerating mm -hmm. the ecosystem. So we thought that okay, let's go back to my hometown where the land was like just a bare land of the rice field and then the, it's not even growing that much rice because it was so degraded and then we thought that we're gonna start regeneration projects and then starting a learning center and start doing the work and uh, we did not even uh, calling out or spend time fighting team <laughs> we were just okay we will just start doing it and whoever like to join us they can join us later kind of mm -hmm. <laughs> and we did not think even that why we did not uh, um, even imagining like a, a big eco village community at all more like focusing on regeneration of the nature but however, it start to evolve as we start to embrace more of the social dimensions of the um, of life that we learn. We both learn about eco village design and then how important it is to um, when we have people coming to our place as volunteers or as intern to embrace this with the social values that we believe in, and eventually the community it gradually uh, build up. So I now, before I go more into detail of this uh, about Gaya Ashram, I'd like to share with you a one minute slideshow, which is uh, showing you the journey of Gaya Ashram from 2013 to 2024, which is about the same year as yeah. like, uh, she being mentioned. And um, during those years that we spent time on a rice field where there was only two trees there, and uh, we can pause for a moment, yeah. And then um, that year, um, there's a lot happening and our goal was to regeneration and uh, eventually more people joining us as I, uh, I thought it would. And then eventually it evolved into uh, an eco-village. We will we'll talk more in detail. There's so much challenges during those years, difficulties and, and a lot of effort putting into designing, redesigning, uh, failing, successing, all those processes. But 
at eventually there are something to celebrate. And then I made this little video uh, in the spirit of celebration also, which um, I like to share with you. So let's put out this uh, a one minute slideshow just to give you the overall picture of the journey. We can pause here. We can pause at this. Uh, we can stop at this image. This is the um, journey of the 10 year journey in one minute. Of course, there's <laughs> a lot happening that I cannot share with you all the moments of the 10 years. But the overall story of Gaia Ashram is the regeneration that we believe it needs to regenerate with, from within and also from outside of us. Regeneration from the inside is to regenerating our sense of connection, our sense of belonging to our earth. We use deep ecology and philosophy as a guideline on that. And then we, so then we integrate this kind of practice into our day-to-day -day living. It become our culture. So we create tradition practice that will help us to continue to be reminded that we are part of nature and nature is our home and this is where we belong. And then in the um, social so aspect at the moment we have we say like we have about 10 12 uh, team member and with these 10 and 12 there is both people who are staff and not yet member and then we have people who are member which is mean the resident the permanent resident we have our structure and process how can someone become a member which it will take about a year period of tried before they can become member uh, fully and then um, Apart from the member, then we have the staff, people who work there and then not yet member. After they live there for one year, and if they or the member consent to accept them as member, then become member. And then we are apart from that, we have intern who stay with us to learn from three months to six months, and then volunteer who come to learn also. And uh, we have guests and then people who come to take courses at Gaia Ashram. So imagining is like a, a learning center that invites people to come and learn together. And in this learning process, we can also contribute in giving back to, to nature. So we believe in the learning with the head, the heart and the hand. So all the programs, all the learning program, educational program have to have the aspect of practical learning uh, into it as well. And then the, um, in the aspect of the economics, so we're trying to discuss on how do we find a fair shares of the our resource, for example, who could have a house, who could have a who could have the what are the welfare that we can provide for our community members. And uh, when we earn a living, how can we share the income, for example, that would be fair. And what is fair mean? So this kind of thing we need to discuss and work th working it out. We did not plan this from the beginning because we did not plan that we're going to have people live together as an eco village. But when we start the project and we, we have more people coming to join us and we want to create further impact on the landscape, on the regeneration. So then we realize we need more people involved. And to have more people is actually to then establish a more uh, an eco village uh, to make it more established so eventually we decide to extend the the community so providing a land a space where the people who would be interested to come and live together as a permanent member they can go through the process and then join into that uh, residential area 
and but they need to uh, we need to go through the process where we know that people who come to join us share the values and then the goals and the purpose together and um in the uh, ecological aspect we have a goal of regenerating biodiversity so our uh, practice is uh, based on that principles and what is on that goal so the way we grow our food so we use uh, permaculture practice regenerative farming practice such as agroforestry food forest or forest gardening uh uh, and then uh, we also uh, extend our wild uh, wildlife preservation area, uh, reservation. So we have now, we extend from like six hectares to uh, about at the moment, 13 hectares, where we are not managing all of that area, but we, we put some area as a area for rewilding. And uh, in our daily life, we try to create minimum uh, less impact to nature. So we manage our own waste, uh, um, trying to go for zero waste. I saw some question the people ask that, like, do we manage our poop? Yes, we did. <laughs> we turn it into compost. <laughs> and um, and then the, uh, we treat our water, the, the gray water coming out from our kitchen, from our shower to treat them before they, they go to the earth. So that is the general picture of Gaia Ashram for in the past 10 years. Uh, if I sum up in short, it's a regeneration project, an eco-village that focus on regenerations. And regeneration means regenerating our sense of um, connection with earth, regenerating a culture that would help us to co-living with earth better, and regenerating the eco the ecosystem. And then in doing that, we're trying to create a, a, a community where we can live together sustainably and then also try to extend our impact, our influence toward local communities. So that is the Gaia Nation in, 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 in general. And now to learn deeper on these, uh, these two community, two uh, eco-village examples, I think we can have a little dialogue or discussion into some of the aspect that uh, we think that it might be uh, useful to look into because the, that is something is, um, if you are however interested in creating an eco-village, this will be something to think about also. That is one of the thing is like, how can an eco-village or intentional community like this coexist or learn from local? Uh, community local culture. I hear from uh, Shun Hing a little bit already, like since the beginning of your project, you already approach to the local uh, community, like the Hakka uh, ethnic yeah. groups. And what, how, how was that for you? What did you learn from them? Is there anything that you learn and adopt from, uh, from them and then adopt into creating your community? Or is there anything that is you find that is, um, is it the different brings some difficulties into your eco village development? Yeah, um, I think um, as uh, I think uh, um, use regeneration as the uh, keyword, right? Uh, and just now I mentioned more on conservation and also the the local lo, local villages and the localness, yeah. And I think this has to be sort of like um, contextualized in the the situation like ten years ago in Hong Kong and also in the historical um, the history of the Hakka people uh, in Nam Chong, yeah. And uh, maybe I first talk, talk a bit about our why we use we emphasize so much on the, the conservation thing because uh, i think like in the uh, like 10 or 10 10 years ago um we why a group some a group of people went to nam chong yeah and, and dreamed of building an eco community there with also a village at their village people living there we are not we don't 
buy bought a piece of land there and then start our own life mm. there yeah so it started off with a crisis intervention so it's a, the contact is um, there are actually a lot of uh, villages um, and farmland in the rural areas in Hong Kong being destroyed yeah for making space for urban projects yeah uh, like uh, the MTRs and then reservoirs and things like that. And Nam Chong, yeah, uh, faced similar threat. Yeah, so we also, uh, at that time, um, the concerned people, like I'm, I'm one of the uh, so-called uh, land nurturing uh, initiative uh, member. Yeah, uh, so we are critical of the mainstream development plans and the um, gradual dis disappearance of the rural communities and agriculture in Hong Kong. And then, and we see Nam Chong, at that time, there is also uh, a small crisis there. And then that's why, and there, was, there at that time, there was also already one um, uh, organic farmer uh, uh, lived there already. And then we, and he started to uh, get the people together uh, there to, to, to start off this nur uh, land nurturing uh, movement uh, to support uh, that land, farmland in Hong Kong, like Nam Chong, and then the rural area should be cons conserved rather than uh, just waiting to be developed. Yeah, okay. So that is the, uh, why we talk about <laughs> conservation in the very beginning. Uh, mm. And then, and started off with eco agriculture, and also because farm farming is so agriculture is so have no no place in Hong Kong because of the this kind of uh, urbanization, and then the uh, the government is not really um, taking care of it and not seeing the significance of agriculture. So that's why the self sufficient rate of vegetables and then dropped from eighty percent thirty percent. 30 to 40 percent back in the 80s to nine to now only like two percent yeah things like that yeah and well i think when we um moved uh i mean when more people uh, uh started to uh, be more engaged in the community so uh we th we really feel that we didn't really know actually the history of Nam Chong and also the um, history of the rural areas <laughs> in mm. Hong Kong. Yeah, so we are so ignorant about that. Yeah, so, uh, but we, after the, um, uh, that's, that's why we started to, uh, the oral history projects. And then when we talk more with the people there, particularly the elderly people, we find that there actually, there are a lot of things that we can learn from them. Yeah, and uh, like the traditional wisdom of how they make use of the the natural resources to do uh, to build their own houses. Yeah, so you can imagine three hundred to four <laughs> four hundred years ago up to now, the the so the villages are still sort of like remain. Well, there are actually um, different kinds of uh, uh, rebuilding and things like that. Yeah, changes over there but actually uh, there are many uh, wisdom that uh, that can be learned from like uh, how they make use of the natural resources in in building and do farming yeah and um, and also their way to they associate with one another the mute the mutuality mutual help yeah and uh, and then the their way the the respect for the so-called the spiritual power or the religious belief also empower them to not to really um, uh, harm the, uh, the ecological system yeah, or the nature because this is the source of livelihood. Yeah. And so uh, when we went back to the history of the, the village yeah, and then the ancestors, so we think that... Um, we that's why we also try to learn from them how to make use of the local resources like using the mud and then the bamboo and also the the, the wild plants for mulching and that sort of things yeah um of course uh, we talk about difficulties <laughs> yeah so um 
in the beginning, because uh, the villagers actually don't know what we are doing, we were doing mm -hmm. <laughs> at that time, because they found that uh, these people coming from outside and then they want to do farming. And for them, doing farming is so, it's hard work. So they think that they don't really didn't want to do anymore. Yeah, because they're mm -hmm. all and many, many elderly people. Yeah, so they are really just curious about why there are people from outside wanted to continue to uh, do something that they think is quite uh, useless. Yeah, and uh, and they also don't have that idea of really so called uh, uh, the ecological system things like that. But I think um, we. In the beginning, it is uh, quite difficult to let them know what we try, we want to do. Yeah, because uh, uh, there's, I think, different kinds of language. Yeah, I think uh, in the beginning, and also they don't know not they don't know us well enough. So I think in the beginning, we need really to get to know them better and uh, uh, build up the trust relationship, and then now I think we can really. Uh, Sometimes we invite them to come to help us or to teach us how to do some the farming skills and then also um, exchange uh, seedlings and things like that. Some of them, are because of uh, we continue to do farming uh, for 10 years uh, nonstop, and then they also try to uh, start something, a small veggie garden outside the house. And then, so I think now we have... Uh, more sort of like um, communication and then uh, uh, some got more mutuality uh, with the local villages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. uh, but I think we we need to, uh, guess like the Nam Chong case, because um, we are not people coming, yeah, we are people so, so called, we call us new village, new villages. Yeah. And then we try to, um, do something using a new language, uh, equally village, yeah, things like that to uh, achieve our vision and mission, yeah, to do something from the earth, yeah. Uh, so it is um, difficult actually to use uh, the that kind of uh, notion of um, uh, well, th for example, like regeneration and thinking of our new generation our next generation i think they are doing they were doing that they have been doing that yeah that's how why they don't really destroy the earth or harm the earth because they think mm -hmm. of their future generations i think yeah. the uh, traditional culture in hong kong or in the chinese culture they really think about the future generations yeah mm -hmm. so um this is already inside their own culture so i think um when we how we can communicate with mm -hmm. our notion of uh, eco-village uh, uh, concerns and also or climate change and things like that uh, with their traditional way of living and and mm -hmm. get uh, and and let them know that they have th this, these values are very precious but for them mm -hmm. they really don't realize that because I think there's yeah. something really old and uh, yeah so I think they yeah. they need more uh, filling the gaps uh, between mm. so-called the new villages, us, and also the indigenous villages. Yeah, this nice. is, yeah. Nice. So I don't know whether, <laughs> because I uh, uh, um, also lived in your own community where you were born. So I don't know whether yeah. you face similar or different uh, yeah, situations. I, I, yeah. Yeah. yeah, what, um, what, what, what actually, what inspired me to, to to go on the uh, community path was uh, is the how I experienced people live together in the um, in my village in my hometown, so I I I see that there's a lot of thing that we can learn from them. There are a lot of uh, is the community the local communities where we can see that they are still existing a lot around in our region. It is a place where it hold a lot of wisdom on how we can live together human to human and human to nature. Mm -hmm. So that is what inspired me to go back to my home village as well and to mm -hmm. learn from the people there and using what I learned from the eco-village design principle to understand my experience in my childhood and still still witnessing nowadays 
of course, there's still something now challenging because of the new language. And part of me is that it's still that village girl and part of me is not anymore a village girl. <laughs> it's also just uh, uh, an, individual, an, an individual herself. And, um, but we try to have both community coexist by uh, having uh, mutual respect to each other and support each other. Now we work on the project together on the um, on the school, but then in the future we would have more collaboration with the with the local communities. So as we don't have time too much to go into detail for today, but I just want to put into the the summary that uh, I think like uh, how do we coexist with local community as intentional community is something mm -hmm. to 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 consider when we want to start a an international community. It is because there's so much we can learn from each other. And I think if we believe in creating a community, we would also believe in like the community that is already existing. And then how can we support each other to strengthen each other as well? So yeah, and um and that is how we create the regional resiliency, you know. Uh, because uh, although it an eco village trying to be uh, self self sufficient itself. However, we are still part of the uh the system, uh, even though that is the system that is we create as a new system. We still need to actually, in my vision, I think like beyond eco village is an eco town where many different initiatives happening in the regions, and then we connect it, and then we work together and support each other with a lot of diversities of those initiatives. So this is why I, uh, I'm curious about how do we work with local communities when we go settle in a, in a place. So I don't know if we still have more time for the discussion and dialogue. Uh, let's, let's, let's go back to see and, and then see how we are doing and what we're gonna do next. <laughs> Thank you very much for the wonderful presentations and the dialogues. And uh, it's a pretty, we don't have like so much time to exchange, but I see there's already some questions. So maybe it's um, good that we can answer some of them. So if those who do have the question, you can keep typing in the chat box, even though we might not have enough time, but still like, just so like uh, our curiosity is good. Um, so there's one question is about the youngers and the educations. So are there many younger children raised or welcomed in the eco village? If so, so what will the practice that being used to support them to develop the mindset, like the deep ecologies and the eco village mindsets that you have mentioned? So I know Om have two children. I don't know if you want to answer first. Yeah. Like, how do you support your children or other children in the village? Mm. Mm. I think like the way of life that they observe and being part of is the best teaching for them. I mean, I uh, got influenced because I, speaking for myself, from being a a child going in a, in a village also, knowing that I am educated and have so much belief and connect with the land and connect with other people, knowing my place in the community because I live in the community. I have the experience in the community. No one actually teaching me about community. I just experiencing it and know it. So I think when we welcome the family or children coming into the community, just let them be part of it. I think that 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 is all. And then um, they be then be part of the way of the culture. Usually when we have family come, we trying to accommodate uh, both the parents, the adults, and also the children by trying to provide a program for the children. Sometimes which they they have a lot of uh, space to choose what they want to be part of. One day they want to be doing this with the volunteer, with this volunteer. One day they want to go to the local school with other project manager. One day they just want to play with the chickens. So just giving them that space where they can feel safe to explore different area that they are interested in. I think that that in short for me. <laughs> yeah. And Shen Heng, yeah. Oh, um, yeah, in Namchong, uh, as we see, uh, 
the the indigenous village also a stakeholder or part of the community. Yeah, uh, it's it's a pity that actually there are no children uh, living in the village, mm -hmm. in the villages, because um, uh, as I said, uh, most of them uh, migrated to Europe or England, England and or the uh, um, um, other places in the 60s and 70s. So actually most of the new young generation state uh, don't want to come back to Nam Chong, their hometown. So now there are mostly elderly people living in the villages. And so we are thinking of more how to serve or to uh, to serve the elderly people. Yeah. And for the new villages, so we uh, we have a different generation, uh, like my generations and also younger one in the 20s and the 30s. Uh, but uh, because as I said before, uh, uh, there are not many spaces for people to move in, yeah. Uh, so that's why, among our new our new villages, there we don't also have uh, younger generation or children living in the community, uh, uh, or in uh, a family with children. Yeah. So some are couples and some are uh, uh, singles and yeah. But we do have some programs uh, for the uh, children or high school students. Yeah. So like maybe like um what um did in Thailand. So uh so we also used more experiential learning. Uh so like the head, mind and hand, like right? yeah. So it's um very effective actually for um urban I mean children or high school students coming from the urban area because for them really they they have very little knowledge about taking care of them, cooking and everything. Yeah, so experiential learning is also one way for us to do education for the younger generation. Uh, yeah, so we don't really have many programs for the younger kids, but for um, high school students and also university students. Mm, thank you. But it sounds like the community itself is already a great support for the next generations, just to being there and then people, we just teach them naturally. Yeah. Um, talking about the young generations, there is also a questions about future, like is there any successions plans uh, in case the founder is not here anymore, they move on or for any reasons, is there any plan like how to sustain the eco village? Like, um, yeah. Yeah, thank you for the questions. We are just right on that process now. <laughs> Actually, uh, we start thinking about this when we know that we're gonna open, uh, we're gonna start uh, develop an, uh, an eco village. As for our case, we start from myself and my husband. And then after like eight, seven, seven eight years, we realized that we need more people. We need a more permanent community establishment. And then we already start to discuss what, how is that gonna work? Because like how we can create a sense of community when people come and then there is this like founders who are the owners of the land and then the ideas and then they are pay for everything. And then um, how is that gonna create a sense of like a ownership, a collective ownership? So that is a big question that we need to, we need to uh, design also apart from just uh, a, a space for people to live. So then uh, what we planned is that now we are slowly create or design a membership system where people can become a member and then which is it take about a year period before they can become member. And each period you, ha you have a different stage. For example, uh, short-term intern, long-term interns, staff and member. And each state, you have a different level of uh, decision making involvement. I think decision making is uh, one one uh, aspect of it that to to transition from the individual a couple founders to a collective group of people um, managing the project. So we start to include member in the important decision making. Still, uh, we still our longest member apart from us now is only three years, so it's not everything that he is involved yet. But he's involved with us more than uh, others who uh, stay less. 
So designing for decision making is one thing. And another thing is like to um, having people get involved in the financial management also. So before it's like we are the, the founder and we are the investor. And now we're trying to, okay, this is the, this is now we come to be um, managing this uh, amount of fund together. And then how can we survive? So then people then can feel, can see that uh, we need to take both uh, responsibility on this burden together. So then you will have more sense of like ownership uh, together. And then the part of it is also we uh, slowly step down by um, uh, partly having people more uh, involved in the decision making and the management and then uh, some areas that when we give them the decision making process, then we we also try not to interfere unless it's contradict with our policy. So in the process of transition process, uh, to make sure that people who live here is they uh, share the values, the principles, and understand the policy or the vision and the purpose of the place. Once we know that people who are living all here together, really. Uh, because our strong, uh, strong uh, voice, a strong motivation of creating the project is the regeneration. So people need to also think on behalf of nature as well. Think and then make decision on behalf of nature, not only on behalf of the people or our own uh, comfort or our own self-interest. So when it comes to that point where we feel, okay, now we come together really at the same pace, at the same space, and then we can step a bit slowly down so then people uh, as a collective can manage more. Eventually we even think slowly move out. <laughs> so then our presence or our absence will give people a bit more space of um, you know, um, autonomy to, to, to manage the place. So that is our process uh, for now. We are really wanting to transition from the, from the founder to the collective to the next generation. Thank you. If Shun Hing has any response. Oh, yeah. Um, I think um, it's a good question it's about um, to sustain. <laughs> uh, as I said, uh, uh, young people uh, in our community is also very important. And then they have been, they are now playing in a very significant role in uh, conducting programs and uh, making a life here together and things like that. I think there are two points I, I think that is quite crucial in Nam Chong. First of all, in, at the individual level, I think uh, young people, if they want, they can, um, livelihood is an, is an, I think they care quite a lot because. Um, uh, they really need um, uh, also some source of income to sustain their ideal life. <laughs> yeah, and also, uh, so that's why we really try to create, uh, uh, I don't have much time to talk about the economy thing, huh? but um, uh, we try to uh, create opportunities that uh, young people in uh, members can generate income in the community rather than uh, uh, having a job outside and then coming back and then have no time for other things. So, so and also um, this kind of sustainable life is also a way to realize the, the, the dream and also uh, to practice uh, alternative life. That's why they wanted to come to live in Nam Chong. So that's the first thing. Secondly, uh, it's about the, um, in the so-called the collective at the community level. Um, as I said, in, in the very third uh, period, we emphasized a lot, or we spent quite a lot of time in uh, establishing a decision-making system. So like Om um, just said, it is, um, important, uh, uh, it is an important mechanism for people, for members to participate and also to have consensus about things. So it's not like, um, People who come earlier have the loudest say, something like that. Yeah. So it is not an easy process because in the there are some kind of miscommunication and kind of conflicts in 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 a certain period of time. So we have been trying um put quite a lot of effort to build up a decision making system and also an operation system. Yeah. Um so that it's also a way to 
self-realize uh, your values and then yeah, your participation is important, things like that. So uh, I think this is um, uh, two points that I would like to uh, talk about, yeah. Thank you, thank you very much. And it's, uh, we only have four minutes left, so we might not able to take like more questions but the, the most like um, take away or the feelings that I have is uh, when Sun, Sun Heng say it's already 10 years since you are in Namchung, but it's still an eco village in Mekong. So today the discussion is really showing there's so many different layers that you experience and the sustainable of the people, the financial and the land. So there's so much to learn. So we might not have time like to, to answer all the questions in one and a half hours. Um, but it's only a start like um, to bring up like the questions and the reflections on the topic. And we hope we will continue to have the opportunities to, to explore together and engage in the similar dialogues. Um, so may I also introduce the next talk um, just to have uh, to end our today talk. So to continue to explore the questions, as I say, like the land, like how to sustain the land will be our next questions. So we have uh, honor, it's our honor to invite uh, Satish Kumar and Vandela Shivas to discuss about the soil and seed. And then there's a one highlight is apart from the online talk, this online talk is also one of the sessions in our free week blended program that is not only having the teachers um, to speak properly, it's also you will have a time uh, opportunity to engage with the close dialogues with them in this free week uh, blended program. And then we will also have the activities like the speaker today also mentions the uh, importance of engaging our hand. So this blended program is not only about online talk, you will also come to cultural programs and visit the community in Hong Kong to really study the soil and sit. So it's a really good opportunity. So I hope we can see like some of you in the course. And um, so also we will have an evaluations uh, form uh, of today talk. Uh, so if you have any feedback, um, then you can feel, please feel free to share with us or you have any idea that you want to hear the topic, you can also share with us there. So um, thank you very much. Um, is there any final words that Om or Shen Heng want to share? Yes, thank you for this opportunity for this dialogue and sharing. I'm really passionate about this uh, content and I hope that I, we could have more time to explore all these different questions that I saw. I, they, they're all very, I really want to respond to them. But uh, yeah, I hope, like, like you said, this is just the beginning. I hope you continue your journey of learning about the Eco Village. And if you're interested to hear more of this content, there's also a lot of resource uh, that produced by the Global Eco Village Network, Oceania Asia, or the Global Eco Village uh, Network International, that you can look up for more materials and inspiration also. Yeah. Thank you for today. And it just remind me. <laughs> yeah. yeah so okay. Last word. <laughs> um, um, I'm, I have prepared many things to share, but I think time is limited. But I just want to say that. Um, uh, although we have been sort of like working hard on in mm -hmm. the past 10 years, but I think it is very rewarding. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think uh, in terms of my personal life, feel more grounded, um, more um, connected, yeah, and happy. Yeah, so, uh, and also I think from ecological perspective, social and um, uh, well-will and also the economy. I think the different, the four aspects. <laughs> I think uh, Nam Chong and also myself also has been quite. Um, uh, I mean, it's it's a rewarding experience for us. Yeah, uh, to uh, build up this kind of um, uh, eco community, and we hope that we can sustain. And then, um, ho hoping that. Some of you can come to visit Hong Kong and then come to visit us. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. I agree. Visiting is the most powerful way to learn about Eco Village. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much.
So uh, everyone have a good day and good night. Thank you.